Hey everyone, my name is Anthony Chu. I'm a cloud developer advocate at Microsoft. And yesterday, we made a pretty exciting announcement. We announced a brand new service on Azure called Azure Service Fabric Mesh. Um, it's basically an evolution of Service Fabric into a fully managed um, um, container orchestration and microservices platform. So if anyone um, is, has been looking for a way to deploy their um, container-based container workloads or, or microservices without managing an infrastructure, um, this is the way to do it. So before we get too far, let's do a quick history lesson on Service Fabric for those of you who don't know um, too much about it. So Service Fabric has been um, running in, in, um, inside Microsoft for over 10, for over 10 years. And um, so, it, so it's been powering things like um, C uh, SQL Database, Cosmos DB, um, Event Grid, Event Hub, or even consumer-based things like Cortana. And about three years ago, we decided to just give it away for free. Um, so now you can take Service Fabric, uh, the same Service Fabric that we run in Azure, and run it inside of your own data centers, either on physical, um, basically bare metal VMs, or, or bare, bare metal machines, or your VMs, um, or VMs in the cloud, um, either our clouds or someone else's cloud. And in Azure, there's a really easy way to stand up a Service Fabric cluster um, by just clicking a few buttons. But all those ways of deploying Service Fabric requires you to understand how to manage servers, um, how to patch your op operating system, how to um, check the health of your cluster. So all the stuff that you don't really want to do um, as, a, a, as a developer. So Service Fabric Mesh um, removes all the, uh, all the infrastructure management so that you can focus on building your application. So what is Service Fabric Mesh? Um, it is a fully managed um, containers, and, uh, con containers and microservices platform. Um, it runs both Linux and Windows containers. So if you're building a new application, you can uh, just basically deploy that um, you know, container-based or uh, microservice application to Service Fabric Mesh, and we'll run it. But if you have applications that are running on IIS today, you can also put those inside of Windows Server core containers and and, and run those on Service Fabric Mesh as well. Um, because there are no servers, you don't have to worry about um, provisioning any um, servers or cluster that you're basically paying for even though you're not deploying applications to it. Um, you can basically just tell Service Fabric the application that you want to run and how much resources to allocate to it, and it'll run it, and you get charged by the second. And yesterday, we announced that we are doing a private preview of Service Fabric Mesh that you can sign up for. So what is in this private preview? Um, you can deploy multi-container applications to this private preview. So what this means is that you can describe to Service Fabric the containers that make up your application, and Service Fabric will just run it for you. Um, you can also define ingress and networking rules. So, um, so you can tell Service Fabric how you want your services to talk to each other as well as how you want external traffic to route into your application and what services um, that traffic is going to. As well, if you need to persist data, you can mount an Azure Files file share into your containers as a volume, so you can write data to it. And because all this stuff um, is deployable using ARM or Azure Resource Management templates, um, that means you can, if, if your application also depends on, say, service bus or storage queues or SQL database, you can put those in the same template as well, and you can deploy and version them together. Um, that gives you basically true infrastructure as code. Pretty cool. So let's talk about the resource model that we use to describe an, a service fabric application in Mesh. So the very co at the very core um, is the service resource. And that's where you tell Service Fabric what containers uh, make up your service, as well as what environment, um, environment variables to set, um, which ports to open up, things like that. And one or more of these services can live inside of an application resource. An application resource is really how you um, um, group together a, a bunch of related services that make up an application, so you can version and deploy them as a single unit. And then we also have a concept of a network resource. And a network resource is basically you're defining um, a virtual network um, and then telling it which, um, which services are part of this virtual network. And a network resource is also where you um, specify an ingress rule. That's where um, you tell Service Fabric Mesh what 
um, traffic to allow into your application and which services to route them to. And the last resource that we're going to talk about today are, is the volume resource. And that's what we use to tell Service Fabric which Azure files um, uh, file share to mount into your containers and what services to mount them to. So enough of that. Let's escape out of the slides and do some demos. So I want to show how you can take an existing application that you have today and put it into Service Fabric Mesh when you get access to the preview. So I have a very basic ASP.NET Core application. It happens to be a voting application. I think every Service Fabric application needs to be a voting application, I think. Um, so, um, so I already know how to package it up into a Docker image. Uh, I have a Docker file here. So recently, um, well, that's not the one. So recently, um, Azure Container Registry um, released a way to build Docker images in the cloud um, called ACR Build. So we're going to use that to, the, uh, to build uh, um, our, our application or, or build, build our Docker image. And we do this using the ACR Build command. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And what happens when you run the ACR build command is that we're actually going to take your source code from your local machine and actually upload it to the cloud. And we're going to build the Docker image there. And then because we're building it there, you, you don't have to do the second step of actually uploading it or basically pushing that image to a registry. So it's going to do all that stuff. And while that's happening, let's take a look at the ARM template that we're going to use to deploy our application. So our voting application um, stores this data in a Redis instance. So this happens to be an Azure Redis instance. So I'm actually defining that in the same ARM template. And then the next resource that we're looking at is, is a network resource. So that's where you kind of define your, um, your subnet. Um, I'm a developer. I don't really know what a subnet is. I just copied it from a sample. It works. It's awesome. Um, you can, that's, and this is also where you define which ports to open up and which services to route that port to, or the traffic on, on that port to. And lastly, this is the application resource. And my application is called Voting. And it has one service called Voting Web. And in here, I'm defining the image that I want to run, and also the credentials to, to actually log on to my registry, um, as well as what endpoints to open up from that container. I'm passing in environment variables. One of them is actually the connection string for the Redis instance. Um, and I'm actually using ARM to basically telling ARM to basically just take this connection string, pull that out, and put it into my service fabric mesh application as a connection string, uh, as, as an environment variable, without me ever knowing what that secret is. And then here I'm specifying um, how much resources I, I, I need to use, um, one, one CPU and one gigabyte of memory. And lastly, I'm um, basically placing that application or that, that service into the network I defined earlier. So let's go back and see how we're doing. It's taking a bit of time, so, um, but that's OK. I already have one sort of prepared. Oh, or maybe it's finishing. OK, it's finished just in time. Perfect. So now what we need to do is we have to run two commands. So one, we have to first create a resource group. That's what, that's what we're doing it now. Now the resource group's created. Next thing we need to do is run the AZ mesh deployment create command with our template and some parameters. And it's going to go off and create our application. So instead of waiting for it, I already have one already pre-deployed. So here's one right here. So we can run the AZ mesh service list command to actually see what services make up my application. You can see I have one service um, with one replica running. And then I can use the AZ network list command to basically see the status of my network. And here I can grab the IP address. And this is the audience participation part. Um, you're actually going to go to this app here. Um, I've created a short link for it. So it's a voting app. Um, it's inspired by our lovely um, community lounge over there with the, with the uh, therapy animals. So you get to choose between wh whether you like dogs, bunnies, or horses. Oh, some people are voting already. So I can vote along with you. Right, so this is, uh, this is how easy it is to deploy an application to service traffic mesh. All right, enough of that.
OK. So uh, next I want to show you is how to deploy um, something like WordPress to service fabric mesh. So an, in an interesting thing about WordPress is that it, tends, it, it likes to write files to the file system. So here, um, we're, we're specifying a volume um, it, that's based on an Azure file share. So here, I'm basically creating that volume resource, telling it where the file share is using some parameters. And then down here in my application, I'm saying that I want to run the WordPress image as well. I will mount the file share that I created earlier into um, var slash triple w slash HTML. And I already have this application deployed. So right here, it's a lovely WordPress application um, with a service traffic uh, article. And we can see using um, Storage Explorer, the files that actually wrote, wrote out to disk. Um, pretty exciting. So the last demo I'm going to show is um, it's basically it's an application made up of a web front end and some worker back ends. So um, we're looking at the web front end right now. It's basically showing the status of the background workers. So I have a TensorFlow uh, model exported from actually Custom Vision. And it's basically mounted a, um, uh, an Azure file share with a bunch of fruit images in it. And it's basically classifying these images as what, kind of, what type of fruit it is. Um, and you can see that it's going rather slowly. I actually had to, it's actually, it actually runs pretty fast, so I had to add some delay in there to kind of for dramatic effects. So it's running pretty slowly right now. So what we're going to show is, um, so instead of deploying from the command line this time, what I've done is I've actually set up a full CI CD pipeline on um, BSTS. And be, because these are just containers, right? So we're, we're literally just, um, we just have tasks to build a container. We have tasks to push the, 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 the container image into a registry. We're also pushing out the deployments, uh, deployment files as artifacts. That's about it for the build phase. And then on the release, um, it's, it's very simple. It's basically just one task. Because we're just deploying an ARM template, we can just use the ARM template deployment task for this, uh, for this purpose. Very easy to do. And I have a variable set here for the replica count. Right now it's 1. So I'm going to go ahead and change it to 10. I'll save it. Click OK. And then once it's saved, I can create a release and trigger this release. So once it's been created, you can take a look at this thing running. And look at the logs. Um, one thing I want to point out here is that I'm, even, I'm actually running my VSTS agent on Service Fabric Mesh itself. So I'm running a private agent on Service Fabric Mesh because you can run VSTS agents as containers. You don't have to do that. I just want to show that. Um, so now if we switch over to here, hopefully within seconds, minutes, who knows, um, we're going to start seeing more and more um, um, workers come online and let this thing speed up. Hopefully soon, because I'm out of things to say to stall. Oh, there we go. It's going faster. It's going faster. We're now we're up to 10. So that's, that's how easy to, to set up a CI CD pipeline for um, service fabric mesh and also um, scale up um, in, any, any kind of, uh, in, in one of your services in service fabric mesh. Cool. All right. So let's go back to our slides. All right. Hopefully, after seeing the demos, you're like totally inspired. You want to go try this yourself. So this is the link you need. Um, go to aka.ms slash sfmeshpreview. And basically, you'll, you'll fill out a form, you'll get in line, and then we'll let batches of people into the preview as space becomes available. And you'll get access to the SDK plus local tooling. Um, as well, of course, you'll get to try the service running in the cloud. So with the last few minutes, what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll, I'll talk about some of the roadmap stuff that we have um, planned for Service Fabric Mesh. So one of the things that set Service Fabric apart from other container and application orchestrators is the concept of staple services. Um, so, um, so, and, and we do that in Service Fabric using these things called reliable collections. So they're, they're basically just um, um, data structures in your code that you write to that Service Fabric happens to persist on your local disk, plus also to, uh, it'll also replicate it to other parts of the cluster so you have higher availability. Um, so we'll, we'll make that available for Service Fabric Mesh applications as well. 
Um, and we'll also make it available in a simpler programming model, so it's as easy as pulling in a library. And that means that we'll also be able to provide that in a lot more languages than we did before. Um, we'll also make the same technology available as a volume driver. So you'll be able to mount a volume into your containers. And basically, just your application just writes stuff out to disk. And then it uses the same, um, same replication technology to, base uh, to both write it to your local disk, so you get really fast reads. But it'll also replicate out to other parts of the application or other parts of the cluster um, so that you have high availability when you need it. Um, we'll also st support secrets, both inline secrets and also from Azure Key Vault. And the, the coolest part, the part that actually makes Service Fabric Mesh a service mesh, is the Envoy in integration that's going to come soon. Um, there, we'll, we'll, be able to, we'll, we'll be able to specify these routing rules. That, will, that we can use to tell Service Fabric, for example, um, that say we want a certain tr um, HTTP request when it, when it comes in with a certain host header to route it to a, a specific service, or maybe even on, the, on a certain host header plus a path and route it to another service. Um, and it'll also help us with service-to-service -service communications. So when you write a service, all you have to do is make an HTTP call to another service using just standard HTTP calls, DNS lookups and stuff. And the, and the service mesh itself will, will, will deal with actually routing that request to the right place. And this is going to become more and more important as we uh, start supporting stateful services, because you now have to worry about which partition of the service you actually want to route your data to. Um, if you've built service traffic applications in the past, um, this, you either have to use an SDK or you have to call the naming service to actually figure this out. A bit of a pain. So, um, but now all you have to do is just make an HTTP call like you normally do. And the service mesh itself will figure out which partition to route your, data, uh, route your request to. So it's a lot more transparent for you. Um, another thing that, we'll, uh, that, that you'll also run into as you build distributed applications is that you have to re implement retry and circuit breaker logic. And, um, and you can either do that in your application, um, but it's actually pretty painful to do. Um, but using Service Fabric Mesh and basically Envoy, um, we can make um, um, make retries and, and circuit breaking pretty much built into the platform. So your services just basically call another service as if it was just an, making an HTTP request. And behind the scenes, we can do retries for you. And we can also do circuit breaking um, so that um, you have very reliable distributed systems. So, um, so there's, I want to call out another kind of six sessions that are coming out about Service Fabric. So tomorrow, there are three breakout sessions, as well as two theater sessions and one workshop. So please check those out. And then the other ones you can check out on Channel 9. And please fill all your evals. Very important to us. Okay. And, um, and, uh, and here's the, the, uh, the preview uh, link. So, so go there and sign up. And you can reach me on Twitter. And Mikkel tells me I should go back to the voting app. I don't know what's happening there. Oh, geez. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, thanks, everybody. <laughs>